Hi everyone, I'm going to show you how to use this little piece of regression software that I've written called CPR. Just double click on it and then uh, the graphical user interface will come up. First thing you want to do is put some data into it. So you can open a spreadsheet program, whatever you happen to be using. Cut and paste the data that you want to take over to the program. You want to use two columns of data only and just uh, copy that. Go back over to the CPR program and click paste data or click Control shift v as a shortcut. Uh, just to show you the basic functionality, then you click Graph. And the graph appears here in the graphing window. And if you want to bring that back into uh, Excel or whatever, you can just click Copy and then click Paste over here, and there it appears in your program. That's a little faster and cleaner than what Excel offers you generally. Now, there's lots of different features. You can set all of these labels. You know, if I want to have, like, you know, method one, on the x-axis, method two on the y-axis, and you know, maybe call this method comparison. And I can increase the dots per inch and make the image clearer, so I can make that 150 dpi. And uh, I click graph again. And so you see now that it's a CRISPR image, and we have method one and method two. Uh, I could put the units in there or whatever. And I can change all the colors. Um, now, in fact, the regression plot is not the only plot that's produced. If you click Next, you get a difference plot, a quantile plot of the residuals, and then a diagnostic plot of how the residuals are scattered around the regression line. And you can copy and paste all those out if you'd like to also. Now, you can change all the colors, uh, and you can make it a suitable for publication uh, so depending on what your pub your journal wants whether it wants encapsulated postscript or tiff or ping and you can set an arbitrary resolution for the ones to which resolution applies um, so let me just show you how you can create some customization of the graph uh, you might want a fill color of purple okay i'm just going to pick some crazy things i'm going to make the points a little bigger um, so make them maybe one and 1.5 in their size um, I can make the fill color, say, pink, and I'm going to make it 80% opacity, and I click graph again, and my changes will occur. Now, that may not be what you want to use, but that uh, that's an example of customization. And there's a, some diagnostic statistical information that appears in the right-hand window, and you can cut and paste that out just by selecting it. Um, okay, so now... What if you're satisfied with your plot, uh, you've got it in the correct resolution for your journal, you've got the correct size and whatnot, and you want to save it? Well, you can go File, Save Images and Stats, and go to, the, say, the desktop. Now, I want you to understand what you're, you're not saying the name of the file, you're saying the base name of all the files that are going to get saved. Now, I'm just going to create a folder, and I'll just call it My Output, and I'm going to call it, you know, plots, oops, plots, and click save. Okay, so if I go to the desktop, and my output is there, those are my plots, I can see my four plots, click on the JPEG file, there, there's my JPEG at 150 dpi, uh, there's the stats output, which is just a text file with the raw stats output. And there's a data file that contains the information associated with the graphical parameters and data in my plot. And I'll show you why you might, might want to have access to that. If you happen to got something you really like, a format you really like, and you launch the program again, you can reload a plot that you've already made. You can say open saved plot, go to the desktop, go to my output, and there's that data file, just click open and it'll load up all your data, and it'll replot. We have three methods for regression, least squares, least squares weighted, passing bad block, Deming, and Deming weighted regression. So if you click Deming and weighted and click regraph, um, you'll get uh, the plot changing, and you'll see that it now says Deming weighted. In Deming regression, the variance uh, between the two methods is usually a required parameter. It's default value is one, but generally could be different. The other thing that's new in this version is um, the ability to change the, the difference plot. Sometimes the, the difference plot, if there's a bias between the methods, the, the band that represents the two plus or minus two SDs is way up at the top of the graph. So you can alter that. You could make that six 
and you could say enter some units, click regraph, and then the regression will occur again. And now the the units of nanomole per liter are shown there, and uh, the the difference plot has been altered. Now this wouldn't be desirable in this particular circumstance, but uh, it would be in some circumstances. Now let's say that you have a point that you don't want to have in there, and you don't know which one it is. You want to go looking for it. Let's say you wanted to get rid of this outlier. You can just say mark outliers and click regraph. And what will happen is there'll be a number that appears beside the the, the three largest outliers, okay? This is the furthest away from the regression line. This is the second furthest, second furthest is the, uh, sorry, yeah. Furthest away, second furthest away, and closest to the regression line. They're not calculated as true outliers, but they are the furthest from the regression line. So it tells me number 48 here is here, right there. So if I if I make it non-numeric, I don't know, I can do it any way you like. You could just put an E for exclude or something like that and, and click regraph you'll see that point 48 now disappears and uh, there's new points that are marked and you can say unclick that and uh, graph again and now we have our plot that is now excluding point 48 and it's shown there is with an E in front of it it doesn't matter what you put there now under certain certain circumstances when you have really dense points and this is kind of uh, something that is not obvious but I'll just show it to you because if you get in the situation it's a nice thing to be able to do. You can make the fill color of the points semi-transparent. Now the way you do that is take the color chart that I've included in the in the zip file and go and get the hexadecimal value and they're shown there in the second column. So let's take we're going to take this blue and I'm going to copy that. I'm going to put that in as the point color and I'm going to put that in as the fill color also. Okay, and so you put that in and then you put a number, it's actually a hexadecimal number, but 50 or 80 are, are nice semi-transparent values. Um, so, so I put 50 and 50 there. And if I click regraph now, what you're going to see is my point colors are blue, uh, but they're now semi-transparent. And that can be a cool effect if you happen to be plotting a lot of points over top of one another. Okay, so... I think most things you're going to be able to figure out on your own from there. Um, remember that you have multiple uh, file types and you have any resolution that you want. Uh, you can include or exclude any of these um, uh, text um, pieces of text here that tell you the regression line, the coefficient determination and the method of regression. So you can remove those. Um, and that's about it. Uh, you just play around. You should be able to figure out just about anything. Uh, it's pretty straightforward and I made it that way because that's the way I wanted to use it really quick to get a nice regression and, um, and get the, the difference plot also for my day-to-day -day work to quickly compare two methods that we're looking at. Okay, if you have any questions, don't uh, hesitate to email me um, and thank you very much for your attention.